Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. I appreciate you showing up. So today we're gonna to be talking about the brand new Sigma Fovian sensor camera that's supposed to be 61 megapixels that was coming out in 2019 and it is now delayed according to the CEO. That's not great, but it kind of is what it is. And I guess we understand why, because they're dealing with a full frame sensor now and not an APS-C. And as things get larger, there is a lot more production. There's a lot more tech that goes into being able to do it. That was one of the reasons I talked about Panasonic probably gonna have some issues going from micro four thirds all the way up to full frame, especially when it comes to heat and other issues that are just inherent to just having a larger sensor, reading more data, right? So Sigma's CEO did come out and say, listen, we gotta delay it till 2020. So it was kind of interesting. Now, Fovian, what is a Fovian sensor, right guys? Is it even something that you're interested in? Let me just start out by saying we have, let's say three sensors that are out there. You have your bare array, which is what most of you know, as well as an X-Trend if you are on the Fuji side, and of course you have the Fovian. The difference is just basically how it's capturing light, how it's reading the photons hitting that sensor, that wafer, right? The way your bare array looks is kind of like this. I'll throw up on the screen. You have your green, your blue, and then underneath that you have red, green. So you have two greens and you have one red and one blue for every one of those sensor points, let's call it. On the X-Trend, as you can see here, we have a big spot of green and we have the green, blue, red, all the way around it. So it's just a different way of capturing that light. Now, Fovian is completely different. Fovian is more of a film type of architecture where you have your different layers. You have your red layer, your green layer, as well as your blue layer. And instead of like an X-Trend or a bare array that looks to the pixel next to it to try to discern, to interpolate <laughs> what the color's supposed to be, the Fovian is actually getting 100% of each color. Let's call it quote unquote. How does it do it? It has three layers. So when the Sigma CEO says we have a 60.9 megapixel camera coming out, well, it's actually a 20 megapixel camera. It just has 20 megapixel and 20 megapixel and 20 megapixel. It has got a blue, it has a green, and it has a red that specifically read that wave of light. That's just simply how it does it. But what's nice is each pixel has a possibility of 100% saturation in any direction. So it's not really interpolating as much. There is a lot of processing that goes into it to decide that RGB color, but it's done differently. Now, in the past, like with a DP1, a DP2, a DP3 Quattro, an SD, whatever, those cameras are always APS-C. Well, they've went now to full frame. And like I said, that is always an issue. Whenever something gets larger, you're having to deal with a lot of issues. And that's one of the things that the CEO said in his talk. And to paraphrase, he said, full frame requires much more extensive technology development than a smaller format, which introduces many challenges in design and manufacturing. And this is basically what I was saying earlier. You're dealing with heat. You're dealing with a lot more data that you're pushing and fumbling around with, okay? So it is a more difficult process. What I think is really interesting, guys, is this is a Japanese company that is getting their wafers, that's getting their sensors from a US-based company, TSI Semiconductors. Now, TSI, they have been around for 30 plus years. They have been churning out wafers in a quantity of up to like 25,000 wafers per month, seven days a week, 24 <laughs> seven for 30 years, continuous in this 150,000 square foot clean room. That is massive, right? But what's cool is it's sitting in Roseville, California. Wow, you have a Japanese company that's buying its wafers from, or their sensors from the US. I like that. I like to see some of the internal to the U.S. companies starting to export 
greater quantities of different products. I love that. In comparison to the companies here that are always having to go to China or Japan or wherever overseas to get its products. It's manufacturing done. We just don't do enough manufacturing in the U.S. anymore. Seeing that makes me happy. So anyways, to kind of bring this around, is this something important to you? Is it something that you could get into the whole Fovian technology. I can tell you from firsthand experience, images that you see that's captured using a Fovian sensor, the images are sharper, they're razor sharp, and the color fidelity is absolutely just fantastic. So if you're a food photographer, I mean, this is just, it's second to none. It really does a fantastic job at color rendition. Okay. The downside of Fovian is basically in noise. All right. It has a very hard time with noise because it needs a lot of light. So whereas some of the old APS-C cameras would go all the way up to, let's say, 24,000, the Fovian sensors would go up to a maximum of like 6,400. Now, 6,400 maximum means that you probably get about 800 <laughs> ISO out of it. So they don't do well in low light. This is something that Sigma is going to have to work on. People want really good imaging in low light. Fujifilm has been doing that in spades lately, right? They have an APS sensor camera, but it really is doing a great job in low light. How they do it, I don't know, and I really don't care, but they are doing it, okay? So I think Sigma is going to have to step it up when it comes to light and how these different layers are capturing it. What's also interesting is that Sigma's new camera that comes out in 2020 will be part of that L glass alliance, right? That L mount. So it's going to be like the Leica. Now we have Panasonic and also Sigma that's going to be using that glass, which is kind of nice. That means they're going to have really great glass right out the get-go with this full frame that they're going to be putting out. Remember, they've been doing APS-C for many, many, many moons, we're now seeing them go full frame in 2020. So, like I said, is it something that you're interested in? I think it's fascinating. I really like the Fovian images. I personally do. I was always a fan, but things kind of just went south for them. They really didn't produce, right? There wasn't enough market share. There wasn't enough people that were clamoring to get the Fovian sensor, the Fovian cameras, to make it really a go of it, so to speak. Fujifilm has been the only camera company to use a different sensor that really does well in comparison to like a bare array. Some people don't like the X-Trans, some people do, but it is still a different way of capturing that light in comparison to the standard CMOS bare array that we have out there. So anyways, what do you think about Sigma's new camera that will be showing up let's say next year in 2020. Is it something that you're interested in? Have you ever even heard of a Fovian sensor in the past? Is it something that you've used? What do you think about it? If you have used it, please, in the comment area, put your thoughts about it, what you like, what you didn't like about it, and what you think Sigma needs to do to be able to command a decent amount of market share once it is released. So that's it, guys. As always, please, if you enjoy my content, throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available. And click the bell icon right around here. So when it is available, you'll be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me. I would really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next vlog. Take care, guys.